Good afternoon, guys. Happy bank holiday. Hope you're having a great time in the sun. Um, it's nice to have the sun joining us this year. Just took his time turning up. Um, I just wanted to do a quick video bookending the last five messages that I've done looking around the story of Gideon and just just uh, chatting a little bit about it and just pulling some stuff out of it just to encourage you with your walk with God and hopefully this will be for somebody that hears this just to encourage you to uh, keep going with Jesus and keep fighting the fight with him. Um, so we started it all off uh, a while ago now, I think six weeks ago, with how do you want to be delivered? And it was all about the conversation that we all have the um, choice to be delivered to the enemy or from the enemy. Like we we can either be in, in a place where the enemy has power over us because we choose to fall into the trap of doing things that we shouldn't do. And then that leads us into places that control us in the ways that aren't good. Um, and then, uh, or we can be delivered from the enemy and be, to be delivered from the enemy, we have to call out to God. We have to ask God and he will move in straight away. He will put in a plan to rescue you from your mistake, from what we've done, what we put ourselves in. Um, so the third, that's how we kicked it off. It's just the understanding that we can make, we have a choice. We could choose to be uh, in a, a pretty bad place where the enemy is ruling over us or we can choose to be delivered from that and let God lead us and direct us and gu guide us. Um, the second message was um, off limits and it was about taking off the limits that we put within ourselves and how uh, we can have things spoken over us and 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 uh, not good things and that those things then limit, limit us for our whole lives, some people, um, and yet God says otherwise. And then understanding that once that is spoken over you, um, we can choose to remove the limits of what ourselves or others have put on ourselves, or obviously we can live with those restraints and live with those limits. So learning uh, with Gideon, he he introduced himself as being the lowest of the lowest, the least of the least of the least in the least. Um, and yet God is saying, no, you, this is who you are. This is who I see you as. And when we're introduced into a relationship with God and we get to hear what he says about us, it's all new talk. And we, we are up to that point. All we've ever known is probably pretty negative things that we've spoken of ourselves. Others have spoken over ourselves. We remember all the rubbish stuff, even things our teachers could say or family members or ex-boyfriends or girlfriends or whatever it might be that we can be in that place. Where we're like, oh, they said this and that's who I am. And this is who I've always been told I am. And I was always told I was never going to achieve. And we believe that even if even if it's not remotely even true now in the way that you're living your life, it's still like, oh, yeah, I was always told that was going to what I was going to be because we remember the negative stuff. So um, about taking off those limits. And then uh, the next um, message was called Transfer Talk. And Transfer Talk was all about when we can talk about God. We can say, I've always had a faith always believed there was a God. Like I, I always think, I think I always believed there was something. I always shout into something half the time before I was introduced to Jesus. But when we are introduced to Jesus, when we're introduced to God, um, a transfer takes place. We no longer need the messengers. We no longer need someone to tell us about God. We no longer need somebody to invite us to church. Once we've been, uh, make that decision to say, Okay, I'm going to believe in you and I'm going to invite you into my life. The conversation changes. You're not talking about God anymore. God isn't talking through somebody else to you. You are now have this open communication, this open line, direct line to the, to God. And just understanding that that's what takes place when God moves into our lives. And so um, for some people, even though they might make the decision in their lives to invite God in, they don't necessarily understand that now they have access to the father they can talk to him and so um and then the third message was last week which was your yesterday can be today or your yesterday is for today which is basically talking about what we go through sometimes in the midst of some horrific stuff like for Gideon he was he was being attacked his his, his village was being attacked his people were being attacked 
plundered, stolen from, the stuff they had was being destroyed and they were always surrounded. And so he was, in those moments, he was separating wheat from chaff um, to survive. And yet in the moments when we're learning just how to survive, just to grip onto life, just to hang on in there. Sometimes some of you guys might be in through abusive relationships. Some of you might have been through some, some horrific past um, situations where you're just in places where you're like, I don't know what, how to get out of this. But in the midst of it, something is going on within you that you don't really know what's happening. But then the enemy that's trying to destroy you, the enemy that's trying to control you, the enemy that's trying to to uh, to attack you and continually attack you. As you go on with your walk with God and what we saw, as I just mentioned with Gideon, as he submitted to God, as he submitted to God, he started talking to God. And then he started to believe a little bit more about what God was saying about him over what was said over him and also what was going on around him. And then um, when it comes down to him selecting the army to take down the enemy, he's already equipped in how to separate the good from the bad, the ones that are going to work, the ones that aren't going to work. And he just naturally gets on with it. And that message was for people that you may have gone through some really tough stuff, but in the midst of some of those battles, in the midst of some of those things that were going on in your life, God was training you and teaching you in things that you maybe didn't even know. But when it came to actually facing that same enemy, you suddenly were able to just deal with it, deal with them, deal with the situation, because you're actually more equipped than you know. And what was yesterday, God has used to equip you for today, to take on something today, or even to teach somebody else how they can avoid or overcome similar situations because you've been through it and uh, you're here today because yesterday didn't destroy you god brought you through it and he trained you through it and he taught you through it and then yesterday's message was you thought it was about that and um it was a conclusion to five parts of talking about this story in judges six and judges seven looking at the story of gideon but when we really look at it and we really kind of break it down. The people of Israel cried out to God after they had messed up and put themselves into the hands of the enemy, cried out to God to be delivered. And God hears their cries. He connects with Gideon and he introduces himself to Gideon and he says to Gideon, you are a mighty man of valor. Gideon says, I think you got that wrong. I'm the least of the least of the least in the least. He's like the, the lowest in his in his tribe, the least in his family, the lowest tribe of all the tribes. He he was he had this over him his whole life. So when God says, I'm going to use you, I'm going to use you. He's like, I think you got it wrong. And I think we're all the same. We don't always. How can any of us believe that we can be used by God? Look at us. We, you don't know the mess that we've gone through. You don't think, don't understand the mistakes that we make. You don't understand like all these things. Like as if God doesn't see any of it, but at the same time, we don't really see any worth in ourselves. And that isn't just down to how people have spoken over us. That can that's down to the way we speak uh, over ourselves. We rarely speak life into ourselves. We usually put ourselves down, and that's what Gideon is doing. God uses Gideon to deliver the people from the enemy. And often we read the story and we go, wow, look at God, he's taken this guy and he's heard their cries and he's taken an army of a few. And the story is all about God getting the glory because it is all about God getting the glory. So he can say, look, I did it for you a few so that you know that I did it, it was my power. And he, he does this thing and the people are set free and the enemy is destroyed. And we read the story and we read the story and it never really changes, but when we really read the story, knowing that God is a personal God, knowing that God loves you, he's with you, he's for you. I think when we look at it properly, which is what we did yesterday, what is it that God really does? God impacts Gideon. 
Gideon may have been used by God. Gideon may be um, the name on the poster. Uh, the people feared Gideon because of what God was doing in his life. But really, what was God really doing? He was taking one life that saw so little worth in himself. And he got him to believe in what God said about him. And this is what God is doing for all of us. We may be, I'm a pastor of a church. I struggle so much at times to think, am I doing the right thing? Am I in the right place? Am I saying the right stuff? There's got to be better people than me to do this job. All these different things. Not speaking much life over myself at times. Struggling. And yet, God is saying, yeah, I might be using you to reach people. I might be using you to share the word so that someone might be impacted by that. I might be using you to lead in a certain way that people might call on the name of Jesus and be saved. But I see you. I love you. I, 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 this gospel, you don't get saved and then God says, right now, just go and get everyone else saved and don't worry about you. God is also so focused on the relationship between you and him. It never changes. It doesn't, he doesn't say, oh, no, no, you're safe now. I don't need to worry about you. Let's get, get on with it. He's going to put calling in you. He's going to put passion in you. He's going to put his compassion for souls in you. You're going to serve him. You're going to serve others. You're going to reach out. You're going to, you're going to see incredible things happen through your life in the name of Jesus. But never lose sight of how precious you are to him. He loves you. And he's always teaching us too. And he's always caring for us too. And he's always changing some things that need changing, taking some stuff out that needs to be taken out, putting some good stuff in. He's not neglecting you. He's not ignoring you. He's not lost sight of who you are. He is for you. He loves you. And he is, he is, um, and that is his plan. Like his plan was to save us. So suddenly God says, I'm here to save you. I'm here to have a relationship with you. And then suddenly the gospel changes and we say, right, no, sorry, you've been saved long enough. Now you just got to get on with it. And that's it. That's not, that's not why we're here. We're not here to work our way into heaven. We're not here to take loads of souls with us and say, look how good I've done. God, am I a good person? God's, God's saying, look, I'm going to call you to do some great things. I'm going to call you to to change lives your spirit is is in you it's of course you're going to do great things but do not neglect our relationship and do not think for one second all this other stuff is more important than me and you he's not looking at you about how great you're doing he's looking at how you invest in the relationship you have with him and when we do that the other stuff comes, the other stuff happens. The call-ins, the identity, the, the words that are spoken over us, the, all of it comes because we learn who he is and we learn what he says about us. So yesterday's message for me personally was for me. And I just felt in that moment, I just felt as I was reading it like, yeah, God, please help me not to lose sight that whilst we're part of a bigger story and that you're going to be using us to reach others, save others and speak to others and pray for others and build, be part of building your church. I don't want to ever get into the place where I forget that you're seeking for me to be seeking time with you. And um, spending time with you and knowing you and getting to know you more and growing in that relationship with you. So I hope that this speaks to a lot of you guys. But I think I think for me personally, like we wrestle a lot of the time with who we are. And even when we kind of get hold of it for a bit and we're like, yeah, I know who I am in God. We lose that and we have to be reminded and we go again and. And um, we can compare ourselves to a lot of people. We can look at what other people are doing. And we can sometimes be like, 
you know, they're doing great. I wish I could be like them. But I can't do as good a job as they are. And sometimes I fall into that trap myself where I look at what others are doing and I just think, oh, it's not. I could be doing better. I, maybe it's not for me. And um, and yet God is, God is saying, come on, I've called you. I've brought you to this place. Look at what I'm doing. Um, now it's time to start believing in what I say about you, not what you say over you or what you think others are or what you think others are doing and then comparing yourself to that and thinking I'm not like them, not good enough. I think we've got to get to a place where we start realising that God loves you. He loves me. He's for you. My... My role in the church, one of the main roles in church, obviously, is to preach the word. But I know who I was. I knew, I know I was like Gideon. I believed I was the least of the least and the least. I believed that I was never capable of doing anything that would be able to defeat anything or take anything down or reach anything. Or I would see other people do it and think, wow, I wish I could be like them, but I could never do it. The fact that I'm in a life where I'm doing it. And sometimes I feel like I have to apologize for that because other people make you feel like that at times. And some people make you don't like your personality or they don't like the way you are. So you feel like you have to water it down because you feel like, um, you know, like you want, you don't want people to feel like that about you. But I've just kind of learned that I'm the person I am is the person that God created. The, the things I'm doing uh, exist because God put it in me and poured it into me because I can't take any glory for it because... Like I said, I know what I think about myself and I knew where I came from. So to be where I am today doing what I'm doing, it goes beyond anything that was within my ability. Only God can do it. And that's not because I think I've made it or because I think I'm great. I don't. <laughs> but I think I just realised that sometimes I've got to start walking in the promises of God. And I want to. I want that for you, everyone that's watching, everyone that's in our church. God loves you. He's for you. But man, he wants us to start believing in ourselves the way he believes in us, the the ability that is within us. We have the Holy Spirit living in us. It says the same power that rose Jesus from the grave is in us. Like that's scripture. So the the potential in every believer to change lives, to be used by God to do things that in our in our own strength is impossible, everyone can do it. Anyone can do it. If they just submit their lives to God, God can use you in such a powerful way, in an incredible way. And it's just been a real challenge for me the last few weeks, just battling a little bit, losing a little bit of myself along the way and trying to find that, if I can get that back with God and growing in him and trying to just go again. And so if you're out there thinking, man, I really struggle with who I am and uh, I'm one of them two most people too, and I'm pastor in the church. I'm supposed to have it all together. I'm supposed to be perfect, by the way, apparently. I'm supposed to have make everything I say supposed to be on point and every action I take and the way I, I am as a dad or, or a husband or whatever, like everything's got to be perfect. So I just want to let you know I'm not, and um, I'm just like you. And so if you're feeling a bit low about yourself at times or you're struggling to see your worth or you're being reminded of what you thought your worth once was and and you're in that place, then I, so, so, so am I at times. I end up in that place at times. But I get there. I always get there with God because I just, God always grabs me and he says, come on, this is who I say you are. And you, yeah, I know that God, I needed, I just needed to take a moment and then you go, go, go again. So I just want to encourage you that, God has called you. If you're in a relationship with him, it's not just to be saved. I mean, he that's the main goal, that we're saved. It's not just to be saved. God wants to save you from a lot of other things, not just your soul, but to save you from insecurity. He wants to save you from self-doubt, self-worth, lack of self-worth. He wants to save you from all those things. He wants to impart his truth, his word, what he says about you into you so that you can live in freedom and liberty and, and 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 a life that is full of faith that others would see it and others would respond to it and as soon as Gideon got hold of it 
it sparked so much fear in the enemy's camp because they heard about what God was doing in the person that they saw as the least of the least of the least. And suddenly his weakness had become their weakness because they couldn't possibly believe that God could use somebody like that. And when they could see that God was using someone like that to, to change the situation and, and rally an army, fear came in the enemy's camp and the enemy had then lost the fight before the fight had already begun. And that's what God can do through you. Because when God can take you, the addict, or the person that was in a right state, or the person that was abused when you were younger, or the person that was in a relationship that just caused so much pain, or the person that failed in their exams, or the if God can take someone like you that people said, there's no chance that you can recover from this, and he can put his spirit in you, and it and and you come alive and and it doesn't defeat you but it gives you strength suddenly what was your weakness becomes your strength and what was your weakness becomes the weakness to the enemy because the enemy thought he had you and instead god turned it for good so be encouraged have a great week uh if you get a chance if you haven't try and watch back these five messages about gideon about the children of israel but look how personal God is. Look at how personal he is. It's about Gideon. God uses Gideon to rescue a whole group of people. But really, if you look at it, God is changing the way Gideon thinks about himself. So when the enemy talks down about him, it doesn't affect him anymore. He sees the good in the bad. And he now knows the enemy is defeated because of what God's done in his life. Bless you guys. Catch you soon.